met with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love every Tuesday and Saturday, and we're doing our Bible study. God bless you as you learn with us. We are on Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Let's stop there. All right. Now, what I want to ask you guys is we're going to dissect this scripture. The earth was without form and void. Somebody tell me what does that mean? The earth was without form and void. Miss Aretha, can I speak on it? Yeah, yeah. I believe what they're saying there is that there was nothing on the planet. God had not created anything yet. Right. So it was more like a deep abyss in one sense? Yes. Yes. So without form means there was no matter. There was no shape. Just like you were saying. And void means nothing but vast emptiness. That's the abyss right there. Just one. Can, can I say something? Sure, sure. Um, one time when I had read this, God kind of like um showed me that like you know how in the scripture it says like before he created the foundations of the world like he knew us before he knitted us in our mother's womb he had like a thought of us before the foundations of the world right and um and in a way like that how we come like how we come from the earth like god made man out of the, he got some dirt from the earth and everything and like this kind of symbolic like everything was empty and void and that's kind of like us before the spirit of God moves in our lives, like we're empty and we're void and we're like nothing without God until he, his spirit moves in our lives until we actually like accept him and what Jesus did on the cross and the spirit will start to move. And that's when we have that form and stuff. Go on. It's like a physical thing. It's like a physical thing, but it's also like a spirit. It's like, it was what was always like in the spirit before it was ever physical. Like we have, you know, where he separated the two. Right. But like without God, we're nothing. Um, so... Right. That's exactly what I'm looking for, dissecting that word. Keep going. Um, and I know it's kind of getting a little bit to the next verse, but when he said, like, it's when God starts to speak through his spirit, and he said, like, let there be light. Um, because darkness is the absence of light. There's no, like, you can't make something dark. It's just absent. So, like, there's no light there, so it's dark. Um, but how God created the light and the, and the light, Jesus is the light of the world, but like he created a solution before there was ever a problem in our life. Like before there was ever any situations, anything to happen, like the first thing he created was the solution to everything. <laughs> Girl, let me jump through the screen and slap you. Thank you. You're doing exactly what I want us to do. Excellent. Excellent. Did you guys see what she was saying? Did you pick up on it as she described it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking. See, I want us to get past the literal and get to the secret treasures that are in the word. It's not just about reading the story. It's not just about having historical facts and knowledge. This word has hidden symbols in it. And it not only pertains to back in the day, but it pertains to us in the here and now. You got darkness in your life. God already had the answer to your darkness before you became aware that it got dark. There's so many things in this word that shows you how good God is, how faithful God is. When I woke up this afternoon, yeah, I woke up late. When I woke up this afternoon, I heard the song ringing in my head, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust 
and obey. Okay. <clears throat> now, so we dealt with the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit, see, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything to say about the rest of that? Father, we ask you for Holy Ghost revelation. Let it hit us like a bomb. Open our eyes to things we never even saw before, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. I'm sorry, I missed that. I had stepped away. Oh, that's okay. The earth was without form and void. We dealt with that. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of of the waters. What insight do you get from that? That's anybody who wants to, to share. Not, I believe that he had not brought the, the light upon the water because just like night, he made there, made a greater, a lesser light for nighttime, even though it was still light, he made a lesser light. Mm -hmm. Right. It says the spirit of God moved upon the, the face of the water. So it didn't say whether there was light on it. It just said that, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. So it's almost like the same movement. It's like I raise my hand and then I pop Peter upside the head. Well, I raise my hand to pop Peter upside the head. So it's all one motion. And it says, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So it seems like there was a lot of mist because there was no body of water back then. When the, it goes on, you see there was no body of water yet. He hadn't created the seas. This is the 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 mist. It was like the gases and the mist. The the um the elements were starting to be formed before anything solid was being formed. This is all atmospheric okay. right now. So that's the waters, the mist, the fog, the cloud, you know, the, the atmosphere was starting to be formed. And yeah. the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Right. And he said, let there be light and there was light. And Davina broke that down beautifully. When God moves in our life, he already has the answer before the problem in the darkness appears in our lives. And he moves. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. There he drew the line in the sand. There's a distinction between light and dark in every phase of life. So tell me what that makes you think of. Well, I, I noticed that um, that he had not created the sun yet. Right. That doesn't come to verse right. 16. Right. So that's, right. that's a lot of people would like to take that as, oh, he created the sun. And that, that they, they want to think of it as an astronomical thing, whereas it was just simply light. It was first God creating the heaven and the earth, and then there was the Spirit of God that was moving upon the waters, and then the light, which represents Jesus, mm -hmm. was all there before the creation of man or anything. There you go. There you go. Because God I have himself. An idea. Yes. I believe that the light was God's glory. Because think about in Ezekiel when he spoke about the vision of God himself and him riding in his um, throne upon the chariots and the chariot wheels. What did he say the likeness of God was? You know how if you look at the sun and you can see those beams, well, the sun is right behind me, speaking of which, but you can see the beams and like the, you said the atmosphere, the aura, the rainbow that surrounds it. That very light, he is the light. Right. So therefore, he took some from within himself the same way he took the breath of life, which was a piece of himself to place it in man. Everything is a part of him. There you go. There you go. Because when he says when we get to heaven, uh, we'll, there'll be no sun, there'll be no moon. God will be our light. So just like you and Matthew said, Matthew said the glory of God. That's right. 
I'm telling you, you're very yes, right. He is the light. Very, yes, exactly. <laughs> He's the origin of the light. The sun can't get its light without getting it from God. That's right. All right. Now, verse 4. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now I want to see if you get something from that. That's more literal, but I want to hear what you get out of that. And anybody who has not spoken, speak. Don't be trying to hide in the background. I'll, I'll reach my hand through here and pop you guys right upside your head. Um, um, this is fear. I guess uh, it's, maybe it's um, um, it's more talking like in the spiritual sense of the condition of man mm -hmm. from when it comes before there was a lot of chaos and darkness in us and then when the light shines in us right uh -huh. God began to see that it was good that's right. And so in reality, when it says, you know, so the evening and the morning were the first day, that is the first day of man, like the growth of mankind, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, it's, that's the, like, even though it's the condition of man, it's also a condition of mankind as a whole, where when you look at the whole timeline of God, right? Yes. When, you know, man first came, you know, for half the first time, it was a lot of darkness, but then when, when Jesus came right in the middle of it, which is, there was a darkness, the evening, and then the morning, which he's called the morning star. Right, and right. He also, he, they, you know, in the in the words it says, you know, the light came and people did not, what was the, what was the verse? Uh, and, the, like, the, uh, and they comprehended it, it not. Yeah, and the light came, the light, the light came into the world and they comprehend them not. Right. And this is basically how God like works on on a micro and a larger scale. It's all about the, there was darkness, but He's bringing light into the world. Exactly. Something like that. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, you just escaped the head popping. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Lynn. Well, I think that darkness represents the evil and I think that as we get more dark in us we get further from the light or God yes so it's really important we stay very very lit yes at all times and stay away from all evil right exactly exactly because what did he say he said I created good and I created evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. You notice the evening and the morning were the first day. I never noticed that till I talked to somebody who went to church on Saturdays when I was still going to church on Sunday. And they were saying that the first, that the Sabbath was started with Friday evening. I said, why would the Sabbath start with Friday evening and not Saturday morning? And they said, because the first day was, was the evening and morning. And I had to go back to the scripture. I said, she sure is right. <laughs> I was shocked. It was like the evening. Yeah, the evening and the morning were the first day. So we start the day when the sun rises. And it looks like God starts the day when the sun sets. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. And the day starts in the dark. And it ends up with daylight. So at the scripture that came to my mind, I'm dissecting now. The scripture that came to my mind was weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It's like everything ends up there in that morning, that bright, you know, just like Peter said, the bright morning star. You know, we don't realize how much light God sheds on our darkness, how much light he sheds on our, on our lack of understanding. When we're in the dark, we can't see. We can't make sense out of things. We don't understand what's going on. 
It feels chaotic. It, we, we get all these emotional upheavals because we tend to panic in the dark, don't we? When the dark hits our lives, we tend to hit the panic button. But what God is trying to say is, I will shed light on your darkness, no matter how dark it seems. I am your light. And you may not understand it now, but you will as your day star rises, as the light shines in your darkness. You will gain more understanding along the way. Anybody else? And it was the, it was the word of God. Okay, we got everybody talking oh, at once. Oh. I heard Peter's voice first. Davina's voice second, and I think that was Sabrina's voice third. So, Peter, jump in real quick. Well, I just wanted to make a comment about, you know, um, that's how the Lord works. And it's good to see that as far as a hopeful thing that yes. God always in things in light. He always there's there's never darkness at the end. So even when even like in the these days right now when we see darkness is the morning is still going to come, you know? Exactly. And that's what God wants you to actually hold on to more, is that the darkness is a part of Satan's plans, like, you know, what he's doing. But God's plans always ends up at the end. Mm -hmm. The light comes mm -hmm. in the morning. That's right. The next is, uh, is Davina. Thank you, babe. Um, well, I just think it's like, it's crazy that in the beginning and how like God says that he's the same today, yesterday, and like, yeah, he always will be the same and how the same situation that lit up the darkness and the, like that, you know, that gave form to everything that gave like, like how Peter was saying, like it made everything from like chaos and darkness and without form. Like it was the word of God that made that change. And today in our very situation, it's the same word of God that will light up the darkness that will like bring form to what seems to be chaotic and like, bring light to where we are not blind and we can see kind of what's going on around us. Like the Bible says, like my word is a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path or a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. So it's just crazy because it's just very much relevant in our situation now. Like the more that we will speak, just like in God's image, we're made in his hour of the tongue um, to follow in his example by speaking the word and being in the word, how we're going to really like start to shed light on things in our the darkness and the confusion that we have in our situation at the moment and we would just get in the word and like that's so funny because like the enemy wants us to be so distracted by everything else or so discouraged by like for example like i've been struggling you know different things but it's like sometimes it seems so hard for us to get into the word but now that we're talking about it, it's like that's the one thing that's going to get me out of this dark spot that's the one thing that's going to start you know like making things start to flow is the word of God. And it's not only like just being in the word, but like speaking the word and actually like doing and being and following in that same example. Mm -hmm. so. I want to share a quick testimony real quick. Years ago, that's, that really was a new revelation for me as I was walking up Lake Avenue. Um, I was at my hair salon that God had dropped literally in my lap. That was a total miracle. And after about uh, a year, they let us know that they were getting ready to sell the sh or they had sold the shop and the new owners did uh, were getting ready to sell it again. So they wanted us out and, you know, they gave us plenty of time, but I'm, I'm like, okay, I know now I'm going to work on it now. I'm not going to wait till the last minute. So the very day I found out when I finished my last customer, I walked around the corner and I said, well, Lord, let's see if there's anything up here because some of my customers caught buses and I wanted them to be able to access the same bus route and everything. So I tried to stay within the, you know, within a half a mile of where I already was and I was able to stay in less than a, an eighth of a mile right around the corner. So I walked up to the corner, I turned left and there was a strip mall there with a whole view, a panoramic view of the mountains and the trees, beautiful. So I go around and I'm going in every door asking if there are any, any, um, any vacancies. And I get to this one door and it was, uh, it was Fiamma Chateau. 
And she told me that she was getting ready to close her store in two weeks. And I asked her, I said, uh, you know, why? And she said it was just too expensive. And I said, well, do you want to close? And she said, no. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm hearing dollar signs now. If two of us are occupying the building, it can cut the cost for both of us. So I said, well, let me ask you. I said, if, if I were to move my salon into your store, would you be willing to keep your store open? Because she had a nice, it was a boutique. And she said, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Please don't mess with me because I do not want to give my baby up. But I can't afford it. Are you serious? I said, yeah, they're getting ready to sell the building around the corner. I mean, we hit it off just like that. She had a little old short redhead. She cracked me up. And she said, um, she said, uh, I, I would I always dreamed of having a combination uh boutique and salon. And I said, Hello. I said, Well, why don't we uh uh lay it on the table and see what, what comes of it? So, you know, we you know, just agreed we would split the rent if if my God said yes and her husband said yes, we go for it. And within three days we both got the yes totally got a yes. And I moved my shop in her place two weeks later. And we signed the, you know, the new lease. I was subletting from her. And we, uh, my salon was right in the middle. So when you come in, you see her clothes. But then I had all these track lights and you see there's a salon in the middle. And it had this little pony wall around me. So I was like separated from everything else. And people could come in and ask me questions about getting their hair done. And I got such an influx of customers being in that location between her customers and the people coming in from the cleaners. Now, I said all that to say this. As I was walking back around the corner, after we agreed to find out if, my, if God and her husband said the same, I'm going back to my shop and I hear this in my head. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was a, upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be. Stop right there. And I said, oh my God, Lord, as I was walking, you were creating. As I was seeking, you were forming as I mean, it was like everything, every step I made, even during the conversation, God was creating. The answer was already there. We just had to see it and be willing to receive it. And that was when I realized there was more to that verse than the creation itself. But God will create a way where there is no way. You don't have the money, God will create a way. You can't get to your blessing, God will create a way for your blessing to get to you. I mean, God will create, every, he is a creator. Every answer you need, he's got the creation. He's got the blueprint for your answer. He's not lost for words. He's not lost for ideas. He's got your answer before you call. Before you realize you're in a trick bag, he's got the solution. All right, that's my quick testimony. Try not to make it too long. Let's go on to the next verse. I, yes, I, I hear somebody trying to jump in. Yeah, go on. Sorry. So when you were talking and like um, the one thing that like God was putting on my heart, like when I was talking about like, you know, like the, the Jesus was the light and there was a day and there was a night before there was ever the sun and the moon and the stars. And like our whole like science and I mean, everybody, like everybody just counts like, okay, because the sun comes up every day and, and the night, you know, the sun goes, comes and it goes and everything. But God's like, even if the sun were to fall and the, the moon were to disappear, like there was still a night and day without that because it was all on God. Like, he could shake the whole foundation of what we think is truth because it was really like there was a night and day before there was ever the sun and the moon and the stars to be a night and day. 
Like right. it's not the way that we understand. Like God, God is in control, and like I don't know. It's just weird. Like it's just like He's the one that runs it. Like everything that we think is not the way that it actually is. Like it's just Him. Right. It's because of Him. Because exactly. we count on tomorrow being here because of the sun. But if the sun were to fall tomorrow, that doesn't mean that God is less on the throne than it was. That doesn't mean God's in any less control than he, he was before because it was all good on the first day. And there was no sun and moon and the stars. It was all because he was the one in control. Right. So, like, in the middle of no matter, I mean, no matter what, it's all good because God's the one in control. Right. Right. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. See, that's what I like about this because we, we glean off of each other's insights. Okay, okay, verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Ha! Ha! Come on, you Bible scholars. Whip that one out on me. So there's waters above the firmament, which he just created. And there's waters below the firmament. So, and that word firmament, like in my translation, it says expansion mm -hmm. to expand something. But if you get, if you get into like the Latin derivative of firmament, it, yeah. it literally from Latin comes into hardened structure of molten glass. Is sometimes the way it's translated, which is a little like going back to what Davina said. Our worldly, our worldly constructs of what we believe that were taught through us through science or whatever mm -hmm. doesn't always mesh when the word comes into play. Right. God's word is the truth. I always ask people, and it's kind of funny, but I'm like, why is the sky blue? Have you ever read Genesis before? <laughs> Maybe there's water up there. Why are, the, why are the stars twinkle like they do, like you're looking through a, a, a shiny light on the bottom of a pool? But, you know, we have a construct in our head of space because NASA tells us or, you know, or because we see things and say they're billions and billions of miles away. But maybe the Bible has another interpretation of that. Right. Right. And not only that, when you talked about the clouds in the sky. Listen, you guys, do you realize that the clouds are water? The clouds sometimes come down real low and sit on the face of the lakes and the rivers. The clouds are water. Now, another thing, something freaky that happened about five years ago, it was summertime up here. It was 92 degrees and it was hailing and snowing. Lord, protect this house in the name of Jesus, I pray. Protect this house in every way, shape, and form. This weather is so bizarre. This looks like earthquake weather. The temperature outside, everybody, it's in the 90s. This is the summertime. And I talked to my brother about it. I said, how can that be? And he's the tech, he's the tech king of the family. He said, up in the whatever atmosphere, you know, you got the stratosphere and the ionosphere and the this sphere and that sphere. Okay. Well, there's a certain level where the temperature can drop extremely low. And when that drops and something rises, I forget how he described it, it forms, the, the moisture that's in that forms ice and it falls. And that's how it can snow in the summertime. And I, I, I was like, it showed me how much we really don't know about God's creation and how things work together. But anyway, okay, so let's move on to verse 7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. 
And basically that's like the water that's in the atmosphere and the water that's on the earth. On the earth, we had steam, we had steam pockets, we had fog, we had all kind of stuff going on down here, mist, but there was no rain. Okay, let's keep going. And God said, excuse me, God called the firmament heaven. Okay, mute your mics. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. All right. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Hmm. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. Anybody want to comment on that? There was um, this uh, this scientist who did like a, this theory on um, the creation of the world kind of thing. Yeah, and he was looking at how the the you know the tectonic plates and how they were actually formed and what they looked like, and, and what the theory was like from the Bible perspective, right? That you know there was a firmament above, and then in this in the verse you know nine and ten, like God created the waters, like He put all the waters under the firmament, under the heavenly firmament. He formed all the waters, and then the land appeared. And so what, what he was thinking about was that um, during the time when, you know, when you said, like, you know, why you would have dinosaurs and stuff like that, there were really large and large trees and stuff like that was because there was a firmament in the, in the, in the heavens that, like, blocked a lot of that dangerous, like, UV, like, radiation, you know, like that, that was harmful to cells and stuff like that. But during the time when Noah's flood came, Right. If you read in the Bible, Noah's flood, there was a the, the rain poured down and it shot up from the earth. Right. And so when you see all those actual like those divisions under the sea, uh, those were actually like a real burst of like tremendous amount of pressured water, like just coming out from under the earth. And it shot up as well as all the waters from the firmament dropped down and it created that flood and then everything came back and, and the water didn't go back to the firmament. It stayed on the earth, like the water that came from the sky. And so and then now, like, you know, how we have more, a lot more UV radiation and stuff like that. That's why we're like a lot smaller and, we're you know, there's a lot of things that are like, not, it was not as a healthy environment as it was when it, in the very beginning. That's like the theory that I, that I read somewhere. Wow, that's, that's interesting. Crazy. Yeah, that's interesting. Because if you remember Yellowstone Park, they have things mm -hmm. where these little holes in the ground and you stand there for a while and whoosh, the water shoots up from the earth, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a perfect example of that. So imagine the water shooting up explosively from all these pockets all over the ground and water tumbling down on top of you too. You could barely catch your breath at that point. Wow. That's crazy. Can, can I add one thing yeah. also? Yeah. <clears throat> Going to, uh, uh, was it Peter that just yes. spoke? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He was saying about like, plates. It would make sense. That would be like congruent with science as far as Pangea would go. If he's saying he gathered all the land into one place and you can see why Africa would fit with South America. But yes. then also, if going throughout the Bible, God has selected Jerusalem as the center point, he says, of the world. Mm -hmm. And if you take where he places all of his enemies around Jerusalem, and if you would look, if you could imagine taking all the countries and squeezing them all back together. They fit like still, a puzzle. Still, it, right like a puzzle and Jerusalem would be in the middle of it all wow. where he's going to establish his kingdom wow look at that and wouldn't it be funny hey, if when he creates a new heaven and the earth if all of those lands are joined right back together so we can all travel on dry ground to get wow wouldn't that be something there's a lot of uh, apocalyptic things that could help that along in the revelation. <laughs> yep, you got that right. Yes. Wow. That's funny. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see. 
Uh, I right. always thought as well, too, mm -hmm. that because of the um, power of Babylon, when he scattered everything, that as well, that was the reason that the four continents separated, like when he was talking about, I think me and Rashad was talking about it not too long ago, I was like, that was from biblical means, just like how they talk about trees and things or fossilized mountains, think about it, when the flood happened to Noah, a lot of things were covered. It never said that they just disappeared. That's right. But so when you see scientists going underwater and finding all these relics of things that happened before, like the chariots and the Red Sea still and other relics, it's because that's nothing but a watery grave of the things that have passed away that God at first wiped out. That's right. They still exist so that he can show he's going to, he's always going to make sure you know that he is him, no matter if people want to pretend he doesn't exist or that he's so-called dead and all of this other stuff. If you open your eyes, you cannot help but face the fact and be honest with yourself and others that God exists and everything that's written in the Bible is truth, is lying right here on land if you'll just admit it. Some right. things aren't even just people's belief or lack thereof. It's this prideful manner of, well, we're gods and we're higher. You know, we made this and we found this as archaeologists and they just don't want to admit. Mm -hmm. Though, um, one of you all might know the scientists I'm speaking of where they had put it on YouTube and they finally had to admit that God had existed, but they still wouldn't put the words out there. They called him a particle. They said a God particle that shows that the world's existence is perfectly created for human beings to live. And if it was snapped back or forward in any millisecond of time, everything would cease to exist going to show that there's a higher intelligence above our own, and that's the only way that they could try to speak on it. Look at that. Admitting while not admitting. I know! That's crazy. <laughs> that <is> so funny. <laughs> I just had a conversation with someone about that the other day. Like, they, they, will like, they will, like, acknowledge certain things, but they won't credit it to God. Like, they will... They just won't, they won't acknowledge it as God or it has anything to do with, like, they'll, like... It's just so crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. It can. Yes. Like in God, but denying his power. And somebody said there they can't. Uh, somebody said they can't what? They can't because then they would have to believe on him. They have to change their whole lifestyle. That's, That's it. Why. Accountability. That's right. If right. they do it, you know, it's like, you know, it's just denial. Like sometimes people won't say that they did something wrong because in order to do that they would have to admit it and change themselves exactly. they don't want to right, right. That's I, wanna, a sad thing, though. I would be my own boss i'll do my thing it's my thing that's right do what i want to do i'm three times seven that's right that's why the, the, that's why people that's why even in the sciences they will accept the most retarded things yes like, uh, <laughs> Like evolution. You can't get know, more retarded no than that. Energy. The Big Bang you know, theory and all that nonsense. Kind of else. And the thing is, is that there is no there is no evidence of it. Right. Or even 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 when you look at like the, the, the fossil like records of like when they're trying to find the missing link and stuff, a lot of them were all hoaxes. They're all lies so that they can get grants and stuff like that. Well like they'll they'll make a whole like monkey looking person from like one little jawbone and we'll make a whole body out of it and say this is this is the missing part of the you know mm -hmm. even though you know yeah. a lot of times that's a lot of times it was an like actual it was an actual monkey or something like that and then they don't even say it you know what I mean? it just stays in our our school system and we believe in that stuff yeah Lies. It's amazing you said that about the monkey thing. Yeah. I always wondered if we're so called derived from monkeys, then what are the monkeys we're looking at now? They just didn't evolve yet. Right. Oh, they how many of you on here? <laughs> okay, and how many of you on here have seen these creatures that scientists have mixed together calling hybrids? Everybody know about this, right? Any of y'all watch Fly? Right. Right. And right. not just even slice the movie itself, but seeing it on YouTube, on the news, all these animals that they put together. So you don't think that some of us are smart enough to know that y'all derived the whole thing of a um like he said a uh, um uh uh what do they call those people those human beings hybrids hybrids a, a Neanderthal oh Neanderthal yes. yeah Neanderthal. basically making yes Neanderthal basically a hybrid because right. once again how do you explain away the monkeys that still exist right <laughs> exactly and so, and there, was a, there was a video that like a church I went to, the pastor's wife gave me a video was like about evolution and like it was a, a debate between evolution and um, creation and there was um, 
a whale. I think it was like a full fossilized whale or something. Like, I don't know if it was a skeleton, but when they did the carbon dating on the whale, one side of the whale or like one portion, like the bottom portion of the whale, like the belly of the whale was so many thousands of years old. And then the other one was like the top portion of the whale was like way more drastically. Like there's just no way like that they just showed how carbon dating is not even accurate. Right. Because there's no way there could have been that much difference with the same whale. Right. In their carbon dating. But the press showed it so like awkwardly. But the other thing that I always thought too, like everything, a lot of the things that science has, like whenever I remember when I was in middle school or I can't remember exactly when, but it was talking about matter, like how it can't be created or destroyed. Like it kind of made me think of God, like, cause God was not, not created and he can't be destroyed, but it's like a transfer of energy. And like how, when he created everything, like it was transferred from him into something else. Like it took his breath to speak all of this stuff. It was just <coughs> little things like that. Like, Everything that like science had taught me, I could see like where God it could compare to God, but they it's like science won't acknowledge it right at all. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions. I mean, like science has become its own religion, and yeah. they can't even see that they have to be in faith too, even though they think they call us blind faith, even though no one has ever seen the beginning of time, the Big Bang. You know, no one's ever seen. No one's ever seen something evolve once you know exactly if, you know, scientists if, if is... would never okay. scientists would never say that god is god they would never do it and the reason i believe that they would never do it because then they would have to admit that they're not as intelligent as they want people to believe they are <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> It seems like to me, it takes a whole lot more faith to believe the earth is 18 billion years old and that we all came from a big bang and the first part of all we just read in Genesis is not true than just to believe in a savior. Exactly. <laughs> it. You know? it seems like it takes a lot more faith to believe in what scientists say is, is how we came to be than what is just plainly written right here. Right. 